the energy and atmosphere credit category in LEED v4.1 for existing buildings focuses on energy management from a holistic perspective with a specific aim of reducing energy use. LEED's system goals explain what LEED aims to achieve. The concepts within the energy and atmosphere credit category touch on many of these goals and play a primary role in LEED's top goal, to reduce contribution to global climate change. Because of this, the energy and atmosphere credit category offers the most points in LEED. Here is the list of the prerequisites and credits in LEED v4. Many of the LEED v4 credits are evaluated in LEED v4.1 through the energy performance prerequisite. The goal behind these LEED v4 credits was to reduce the amount of energy a project uses and reduce the greenhouse gas emissions associated with that energy use. The energy performance prerequisite evaluates both energy use and greenhouse gas emissions. Keep in mind that LEED v4.1 focuses on on-site strategies. Thus, while on-site renewable energy production is fully accounted for in the energy performance prerequisite, carbon offsets no longer contribute to credit achievement in LEED v4.1. In addition, several other key concepts remain in the rating system. Let's review how these remaining credits have been updated in LEED v4.1. The Energy Efficiency Best Management Practices prerequisite remains largely unchanged, with increased applicability for interior spaces and an alternative compliance path allowing projects in Europe to use the energy audit procedure defined in EN 16247-2.2014. The Fundamental Refrigerant Management Prerequisite and Enhanced Refrigerant Management Credit remain unchanged. Finally, the Demand Response Credit has been renamed Grid Harmonization to better reflect options available and the credit intent to make energy generation and distribution systems more efficient increase grid reliability, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In addition to the name change, this credit also has additional details and minor edits throughout the three cases. Just like in past versions of LEED, projects can earn the most points from their documented energy use. Let's explore the energy performance prerequisite. This is one of the five performance scores that projects earn in LEED v4.1. Let's review what goes into the score, and how projects earn points from it. To generate an energy performance score, projects provide data on the building's energy use. Specifically, projects measure and submit the project's energy use on a monthly basis for one full year. Interiors projects can either submit metered data for all energy use of equipment within the project scope, or submit prorated energy use data for the project, calculated using occupancy and base building energy use over the past 12 months. The required energy use data includes all energy sources, electric, gas, steam, and so forth. The platform provides ways to enter the data manually through USGBC's data import spreadsheet or connect to existing data sources such as Energy Star, meters, or a building automation system. In addition to the energy use data, Projects must also provide documentation in the form of utility bills and documentation for any renewables generated on-site for annual review. As you'd expect, the lower a project's energy use, the higher their score in this category. As with each of the performance scores, projects earn a 0 to 100 score to give an easy-to-understand snapshot of how the building is performing. To achieve certification, Projects must earn a score of at least 40 out of 100 in each category, including energy. These 0 to 100 scores for each category are then weighted to reflect the contribution each category makes to LEED's goals. Again, energy is the most heavily weighted category because of its impact on LEED's number one goal, to reduce contribution to climate change. The energy performance score is weighted out of 33. So, the required 40 out of 100 score corresponds to at least 13 points. The energy performance score and the corresponding lead points are based on energy performance across two equally weighted metrics, greenhouse gas emissions and source energy, 
let's take a close look at how those two metrics are calculated. The data that projects provide is their energy consumption by fuel type and key building metrics, such as location, operating hours, occupancy, gross floor area, and project type. The platform uses this data to generate the greenhouse gas emission score and the source energy score, which combined generate the energy performance score. To give you a clearer understanding of what these scores mean, let's walk through how the platform calculates them. First, let's look at the greenhouse gas emissions score. This score rates the building's total greenhouse gas emissions against those of comparable, high-performing buildings. To do so, the score starts by considering the building's total energy consumption by fuel type. This energy consumption is converted into equivalent greenhouse gas emissions. This is where the location of the building comes into play, since the equivalent greenhouse gas emissions depend on the emissions from the grid servicing the project. This grid emissions factor is based on regional data in North America and national data across the globe. A building located in an area where the grid produces a lot of carbon emissions will have higher equivalent greenhouse gas emissions compared to a building located in an area with a cleaner or less carbon intense grid. These equivalent greenhouse gas emissions are then adjusted for weighted operating hours and outside temperature and converted into daily equivalent greenhouse gas emissions. These daily equivalent greenhouse gas emissions are then calculated on a per occupant and per gross floor area basis. This data is what the platform's energy scoring function uses to generate the greenhouse gas emission score. The energy scoring function was developed using data from high-performing buildings, including lead buildings that shared their energy consumption data with USGBC as part of the whole building energy and water use requirement. The other metric that contributes equally to the energy performance score is the source energy score. This score also starts by considering the total energy consumption by fuel type. This consumption is then converted to source energy. That source energy is then calculated on a per day basis, then on a per occupant and a per gross floor area basis. The scoring function then compares this data to that of comparable high performing buildings to generate the source energy score. Combined, the greenhouse gas emission score and the source energy score generate the energy performance score. The table on the left shows how the project performance in the greenhouse gas emissions score aligns with lead points. The table on the right shows how the project's performance in the source energy score aligns with lead points. Both of these tables are shown in the rating system. Here's how the 0 to 100 energy performance score translates into lead points. As you can see, projects can earn up to 33 points in total. Once projects see how they are performing, they can then use strategies to improve their score. These strategies come directly from the LEED V4 rating system. The commissioning credits and the advanced energy metering credit outline steps that projects can take to reduce energy use. The remaining LEED V4.1 credits, such as grid harmonization, also help reduce energy use. As projects implement these strategies and use less energy, their energy performance score will rise. We've now reviewed how the energy and atmosphere credit category in LEED V4.1 aims to reduce energy use.